Right guys, we have tidbits regarding the iPhone 14 series and details on the always on display production, storage options, price hikes, charging more RAM and also the flagship colour for the Pro models, so let's delve into this. So yeah, many reports to delve into, but let's first begin with the always on display because 9to5Max fan references to a sleep mode for the native wallpapers within iOS that could be hinting towards the always on display function we're going to see of course with the 14 Pro series. And surprisingly this is going to be completely different from how the tech works on Android because if you don't know Android phones completely dim every part of the display except the clock and the notifications slash any widgets and so that of course helps you save a ton of battery life when using always on displays. However, Apple instead could be going for a method where the wallpaper is still visible but darkened and the clock and widgets are highlighted. So basically how the always on display works on the Apple Watch. Now I guess I should not be surprised that Apple's taking the Apple Watch route, but at the same time I feel like this is absolutely going to obliterate the battery life of these devices, since obviously with Androids, the whole point most of the display is black, is to of course save you battery life. And so with the wallpaper still being visible, that of course could use up a lot of battery life. And yeah, we already see a sizable drain with the always on display on the Apple Watch. But of course, with the larger panels the iPhones have, yeah, I'm pretty anxious about battery life. Now, fingers crossed, Apple does let us customize this and allows an always on display that's more like the Android competition. But then again, Apple surely wants to stand out. And so unfortunately, I do think it's unlikely Apple's going to give us an option like that. So yeah, my excitement for the always on display has kind of reduced, but of course, I'm going to wait till we see the final version of this before I judge on this completely. Anyways, let's now move on to production issues with the 14 series from Minchi Kuo. So apparently there's been quality issues with the rear camera lenses for the 14 series, the supplier Genius has been experiencing cracking issues, and so Apple has transferred 10 million lens orders to another supplier Largan to of course avoid any delays with the release. And yeah, quotas tell us the impact should be minimal because number one, Largan can fill in the supply gap, but also the lens coating cracking issue should be sorted within one or two months. And even if that's not the case, Largan can of course take over full production of this module. CS so yes, Quill once again firmly believes there's not going to be any delays with the release, everything is on track, we should see an early September announcement and a late September release. Anyways, moving on to the RAM situation with the 14 series, we do have Digitimes corroborating with other reports and telling us that the regular 14 series is getting 6 gigabytes of RAM, which is great. I know some have complained about RAM issues with the current regular iPhones. And while that's not been the case for me, I do appreciate Apple giving us more RAM. However, there is going to be a catch, and that is the Pro models are getting 6 gigs of LPDDR5 RAM, which of course is faster and more efficient than the LPDDR4X we have with the 14 and 14 Max. Now, to be honest, I do have my doubts over this actually making a massive difference in terms of data use. I don't think so, but this is something to note for those wanting the best specs. Anyways, let's now talk about the flagship color for the pros. Obviously, there's been a ton of reports regarding this being a purple, but now we have iHack2 Pro telling us that no, the flagship color might actually be a dark blue instead. Now, yes, this color does look pretty good in the concept images floating on the internet, but I'm hoping this is not the case because I'm kind of fed up with the blue iPhones. We've had it for two years now with the 12 and 13 series, and so continuing the same color for three years is really boring when, of course, we could get a much more exciting purple shade instead. However, I won't dismiss this report completely because iHack2 Pro was actually right about the Sierra Blue color for the 13 Pro series, and he was the only source who told us about this since everyone else thought a pinkish gold was going to be the flagship color. So once again, iHack2 might be right. But let's hope that Apple does completely surprise us and it's neither of these colors and we see something completely new instead. I mean, I've been personally hoping for iPhones that have gradients on the back, like some Android phones. I think that would be great, 
and so I'm hoping that Apple can surprise us and give us that with the 14 series. Anyways, for those who care about fast charging, we could see an upgrade to that with the 14 series. It could now be 30 watts with the Pro Max, and I believe right now with the 13 Pro Max, it does unofficially go up to 27 watts. And so 30 watts would be a nice improvement, especially if the battery's getting big inside. However, someone who wirelessly charges their devices, I don't think I'm ever going to use this. Anyways, we finally have some tidbits from Mark Gurman regarding these iPhones, and he does give us some good news and also some bad news. So let's get the bad news out of the way first, and that's regarding the storage tiers. Mark Gurman believes the Pro models are not getting a 256 base model. Now this is a bummer to be honest, especially when of course you can't even use ProRes 4K with the base 128GB 13 Pro. However, Gurman does give us a glimpse of hope regarding the prices, and that's a fact we might not see a price hike. Now, German was not super clear about this, but he did heavily suggest there will not be outrageous price hikes. And so for those worried about the pricing for the Pro models, I do think there's a chance Apple might absorb the higher cost of producing these devices and give us cheaper devices to boost revenue. Now, why do I think this? Well, number one, the cost of producing the 13 Pro did increase, but Apple did not give us any price increase and so clearly that's evidence that they're willing to reduce profit margins. And why they can do this is because Apple can make the money back through services that of course is recurring long-term revenue. So that should make up for the lower profit margins for these new iPhones. But also German did tell us that Apple knows that many of us can't afford massive price hikes, especially with inflation. And so they've got to be careful with the pricing for these devices to not put off consumers. So yeah, that is a glimmer of hope that prices might not be that bad for the 14 series. And regarding the cameras, we do have images of what I believe are camera protectors for the 14 series. And it basically corroborates with everything we know. So of course, the Pro models are going to have bigger lenses. And also that might be the case for the regular 14 series, which is adopting the 13 Pro lenses. But of course, let me know your thoughts on these new reports in the comments. Anyways, thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. Check out the above on details regarding the iPhone SE 4. And on that note, see ya peeps.